Hello. Hello. I think you hear me. Yes. Um, today, I will briefly focus on T lambda periodist on time scales, and um, I'm going to provide a generalized Maserati theorem according to the provided T lambda periodist. Um, I will start with the um, outline of my talk first. I will briefly introduce you my motivation behind that study. And after that, um, I will provide you a summary which provides a setup for construction of the Maserati type theorems. Um, I'm not going to spend so much time on the time scale essentials. Um, actually, I will evaluate the given time by introducing the shift operators and T lambda periodic functions based on shift operators. Then I will give the basic uh, theorems, uh, which is originated by Masera. And then there will be two or three examples just for indicating the uh, conditions which can be checkable. All right. Motivation, um, just I, I write some sentences uh, for, for our um, guests. Um, periodic solutions of differential and difference equations are extensively studied so far. And, you know, by just uh, Googling periodic solutions of differential equations, it's possible to get more than thousands of results. Um, by using conventional, uh, by using conventional periodicity for a function, we just um, use very elementary definition f of t plus capital T equals to f of t, which holds for a fixed period t as, as positive number. And of course, it holds for all t belonging to domain of the function f. Indeed, um, I'm using this as conventional periodicity. And of course, this definition is valid for uh, translation invariant domains. And of course, in order to define a periodic function, we have to um, guarantee that the domain of the function is periodic. And by periodic of the domain, or later we will be considering time scales, um, we will assume that a domain, a time scale is translation invariant or additively periodic. If for the domain, we have a positive constant P so that for any T, T plus minus P should be in the domain. So it's closed uh, under addition in, yeah, it's closed under addition, we can say uh, for additive periodicity. But we will be considering actually much more uh, general domains. Um, therefore, um, of course, there will be so many domains uh, which are not closed under addition. And we have to emphasize that addition is not the only way to step forward or backward on a domain, on a time scale. For example, in literature, we have very famous equations. They are called Q difference equations or quantum difference equations, and they are not closed under addition. They are not translation invariant. And therefore, um, shift operators are introduced um, by Murat Adabar and Professor Rafu, Professor Yusuf Rafu, and shift operators characterizes how to move on a domain, how to move on a time scale. And therefore, uh, in our definitions, we will take the advantage of shift operators and we will define T lambda periodic functions with respect to shift operators and then. Uh, we will try to provide a relaxed and generalized periodicity definition, and we will call it's going to be T lambda periodicity. And just there is some literature given. Of course, periodicity is uh, generalized and relaxed so far by um, thousands of researchers. And, you know, as the relaxed periodicity, we can refer to almost periodicity and almost automorphic concepts which have been introduced in at the beginning of 20th century. And also uh, I motivated from the given references because uh, this relaxed periodicity is defined on the set of real numbers and on the set of integers as omega C periodicity. Therefore, I will be also trying to unify the existing papers 
on general domains, so-called time scales. Here is the um, given definition uh, of omega c periodicity. F of t plus omega is equal to c times f of t, and c is of course non-zero complex, or mostly I will be considering the real c, and w is fixed positive constant. And of course, according to particular choices of c, this definition coincides with conventional periodicity, anti-periodicity, or block periodicity. But here addition is used, and of course we, we can't use uh, this addition on much more general domains because the time scales we are going to consider does not need to be additively periodic or translation invariant. The objective is as follows. I'm not going to read all of them. First of all, I will be considering T lambda periodicity, T lambda delta periodicity, T lambda symmetry, T lambda delta symmetry for uh, time scales by employing shift operators. And then we will establish Maser type theorems according to those definitions. And secondly, we will try to um, obtain Maser type theorems regarding T lambda periodic solutions of both linear and nonlinear dynamic equations on time scales. And to achieve this objective, you know, Maser type theorems. Uh, establish a bridge between periodic solutions and bounded solutions. And here we are using a generalized, uh, a relaxed periodicity concept. Therefore, according to this periodicity concept, we define a new boundedness definition and we will call it lambda boundedness. And we will see the relationship between lambda bounded solutions and T lambda periodic solutions as the second and the main task of this talk. So there are some time scale essentials, but I am not going to uh, spend so much time with those definitions because of time restriction. I have to assume time scale familiarity. By time scale, I mean an arbitrary non-empty closed subset of real numbers. And in one, we indicate uh, a time scale is additive if there exists a positive P so that T plus P or T minus P is in the same time scale. Some additive sets are given, uh, R, Z, or the union of closed intervals, they are additive, but you know, the given sets below, they are not translation invariant, they are not additive. So um, these are, um, tools for time scale calculus, forward jump, backward jump, step size, and the Hilger derivative. Hilger derivative, you know, we can, we can um, understand it as the generalized derivative. Um, so if sigma is zero, you know, it turns to, uh, if sigma t is t, it turns to usual derivative, if sigma t is t plus one, then it turns to forward difference and so on. Um, there are some well-known derivatives given in that table. F prime, if t is chosen as z, we have forward difference. If t is chosen as q to z closure, we have q difference and so on. Actually, um, we will require the time scale exponential function. First of all, in order to define time scale exponent, exponential function, we have to ensure that uh, our function is regressive. And then we define cylinder transform. And this is what I need actually, because I'm going to consider a linear initial value problem. And in the, in the sense of time scale exponential function, um, we invert that solution. And this is the unique solution to the initial value problem. All right. Now I have to start talking about shift operators. And this, this definition is taken from the original work of Adwar. Um, it just, I'm not going to read all of those steps. It can be found in the in Matt Slovaka paper of uh, Murat Adwar. Um, it just describes the shift operators and it explains how, um, how, we define how we characterize the forward motion and backward motion on a time scale. And 
delta plus will stand for the forward shift, delta minus will stand for backward shift. And with respect to those shift operators, you know, there are some specific examples that are given. If T is R, we have usual addition. For Z, we have usual addition. But, you know, if you choose a quantum domain or Q difference domain, the shift operators changed. You know, for forward shift, we use multiplication. Backward shift, we use division. And for, uh, for another time scale, and to one over two, we characterize different shift operators. Then, in order to define a periodistic concept on a time scale, first of all, we have to ensure that our time scale is periodic, and this is the periodicity in shifts. I mean, forward shift and ba backward shift must be in the time scale. Just we replaced plus minus. Instead, we put forward shift, backward shift, and this definition is very written. And accordingly, periodic functions are changed. This is usual periodicity according to shift operators. Plus minus replaced with forward delta, backward delta. And also, especially this is common used in two different equations, one more Periodist definition is proposed. We call this as delta periodist. Now we used these definitions to invert some results in qualitative theory of dynamic equations. For instance, here, if you pick P is delta periodic function in shifts, then you have that period, you have that property which describes periodicity of the exponential term. Now I have to start what I have done. Um, first of all, I'm using that notation for K times composition of shift operators. And the setup I mean is here. I have to define the set PT0. And also we use MT as the maximum of this set. We have the fixed initial point T0 by using forward shifts K times. We are trying to reach T and this number is called MT. And any member of time scale can be decomposed in this form. If T belongs to PT0, TR means zero, you reached your original point by using the period of time scale. Otherwise, TR is formulated in this form. Now, um, T lambda periodic function is given as follows. Um, we have uh, forward and backward shift operator by the period T, and we have lambda two plus minus one F of T. This is actually uh, very parallel to the definition constructed on additively periodic time scales, just we are using the advantage of shift operator. There is another result. If you have a T lambda periodic function in shifts, then we can represent F in this piecewise defined way. If your point T is belonging to set PT0, you have this representation. Otherwise, it is represented by lambda to, lambda to mt and f of tr. tr can be understood as remainder. An example here, minus two to logarithm of qt. This is q square four periodic shifts. And here is the, uh, you know, very simple algebra, which indicates our function is belonging to that class. All right, um, also another function is given on the set of real line, but specific shift operators are used. And- um, so, uh, Sorry, sorry, Professor Koenjolo, uh, yeah. can you summarize your presentation, please? Uh, all right. Um, you, have, you have about a couple of minutes. All right, thank you. Now we used that, um, periodic definitions. And then first we consider um, this um, linear dynamic equation. And then we got the following definition. First of all, we have a lambda boundedness definition. And we say a function X is lambda bounded if this relation holds for a fixed lambda. And then by Brouwer's fixed point theorem, we propose the following result. The dynamic, the linear dynamic equation has T lambda periodic solution in shifts, if and only if it has lambda bounded solution. Just one remark I have to say, here we had to use P's 
usual periodic function, we can't choose the function a here or you know p whatever. This is it must be uh, delta periodic function in shifts. We can't use relaxed periodic de periodic definition on a because um, I have to use um, this period of the exponential function. This is one weak part of this study. Also, we focused on the nonlinear dynamic equation, the functional nonlinear dynamic equation, and we got a similar result. The T lambda symmetric equation has lambda bound solution, if and only if it has T lambda periodic solution. Okay, just I'm going to recall what do I mean by T lambda symmetry. This is what I mean by T lambda symmetry for functions of two variables. Just um, I, I need one or two more minutes for concluding my uh, presentation. Um, for checkability of conditions, I consider some examples. First, I pick T equals to R and I express my solution in this form. And in the specific form of A and F, A is delta periodic, F is uh, T lambda delta periodic in shifts. I have lambda bounded solution. Therefore, our solution must be T lambda periodic according to generalized Maserati theorem. And also here I considered a nonlinear dynamic equation and I checked the conditions, all of them are satisfied. We have T lambda symmetry there. And after that, uh, we obtain um, T lambda periodic solution of the nonlinear dynamic equation. And according to the Maserati theorem, we deduced that this is four bounded. I'm so sorry, maybe I exceeded my time. Um, these are my references. Actually, I really inspired by the uh, Bonner and Mesquita's paper. Um, this is a very nice paper. And these are my other references. Um, I would like to thank you for your time and interest on my study. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Um, dear attendees, do you have any uh, question or comments? And you can close your screen sharing, dear professor. Thank you so much. Thank you.